I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with University of Missouri Extension. I'm based in Southwest Missouri, and I've been involved in the Missouri Elderberry Development Program since 1997. And a significant part of that program has been the development of elderberry cultivars adapted to the Midwest. And I'm very excited to be invited to be with you today to talk about the situation with elderberry cultivars. We'll start with some introductory material. Then we'll talk about the cultivars that are currently available for, uh, for planting in uh, elderberry plantings here in the Midwest. And then some comments at the end of the presentation on the uh, future of cultivar development. There are three elderberry species of interest for commercial elderberry production. Worldwide, the dominant species is the European or black elderberry, which is Sambucus nigra. The blue elderberry, Sambucus nigra cerulea, is a Western North American species. And there is some interest in developing this type of elderberry as a uh, commercially planted type of elderberry. In the uh, uh, Eastern part of, the, uh, of North America, and particularly in the Midwest, interest is primarily in American elderberry, Sambucus nigra canadensis. And most of the comments I'll make today relate to Sambucus nigra canadensis or American elderberry cultivars. Wild elderberries are, wide, are found across Eastern North America from the Gulf Coast to, to Canada and from the Eastern seaboard originally to the Rocky Mountains, but now pretty much across North America. And historically, a large part of the crop of elderberries that was processed and made into products was wild harvested fruit. And in fact, up until the, the 1960s, this was a very important part of the harvest of elderberries in, in Eastern North America. In more recent times, we've seen the, the development of improved elderberry cultivars that are now uh, being planted across the region. Uh, it's estimated that Missouri and surrounding states now have an elderberry industry in excess of 300 acres again, based upon improved elderberry cultivars. There is still a considerable amount of wild elderberry fruit that is harvested and used in uh, cottage industries to produce products such as jellies, jams, and juices. The development of improved elderberry cultivars is a relatively recent thing. And in fact, the, uh, one of the first American elderberry cultivars described was Brainerd in 1890. Of course, uh, humans have a long history of association with elderberries. And as I mentioned previous, most of this fruit was harvested from wild plants. Now the interest in wild plants as a source of cultivars continues today. Uh, many of the early cultivars developed were, were selected from wild plants and uh, a number of, of uh, more recently developed cultivars were also selected from superior wild plants. If we look at elderberries grown in home gardens, many of these plants too are seedlings. And we really only have a handful of cultivars currently available. And there is definitely an interest in further development of, of more improved elderberry cultivars. Now, if you were to ask a farmer for uh, the perfect elderberry cultivar, a description of that cultivar, here are some of the characteristics that, that you would hear. First of all, plant characteristics. It would be really nice to have cultivars adapted to a wide range of different climatic conditions. Self-fruitfulness would be good. Increased productivity is always of, of interest. This directly impacts profitability, of course. Bigger, strong canes, this would be helpful. Fruiting potential on new shoots. Uh, many farmers are managing American elderberry by cutting the plants to the ground and then growing them more or less as an annual crop. And in this uh, uh, situation with this type of a pruning approach, it's important that elderberries are fruitful on those new shoots. And many of the improved cultivars are indeed fruitful on new shoots. And then resistance or tolerance to disease and insect problems is, is always of interest because again, that, that impacts efficiency of production. Increasingly, we're looking at elderberry as not just a source of fruit, but also as a source of a flower harvest. And so characteristics related to fruit and flowers are, are of interest. Uniformity of flowering and ripening, both within clusters and among clusters on a plant is of interest. Large berry size, firm berry texture, large flower and fruit cluster size. Uh, small seeds are of interest. A glossy, dark, attractive fruit color. Flower fragrance is, is of interest because this adds value to the, uh, the uh, flower harvest. A consistent quality for specific markets. You know, as an example, if the intended market is as a health supplement, it's important that the uh, juice produced from the berries has sufficient levels of compounds that are considered to be healthful. And then resistance to shattering, both flowers and fruit, is of interest. And then plants that produce decumbent fruit clusters tend to be 
uh, less attractive to, to birds. And so we see fewer problems with bird depredation on these, these uh, cultivars. The first group of cultivars we'll talk about could be considered more or less the historic cultivars. And these were developed in the uh, uh, early efforts of, of improving American elderberry and primarily uh, originated in the early to uh, mid years of the 20th century. And the first serious effort was the effort of William Adams who selected plants from the wild in New York. And from his work, we have Adams one and Adams two. Uh, these cultivars, the fruit clusters and berries are described as large. Uh, they are mid season ripening in Missouri in our uh, comparison trials, Adams II in particular has done reasonably well and is planted to some degree in Missouri. Adams II requires cross-pollination. Uh, there is some confusion uh, we feel in the nursery trade as far as the identity of Adams I and Adams II, so perhaps these are best just called Adams. York developed as a cross of Adams II and another elderberry easy off. Uh, this cultivar in our trials uh, produced heavy clusters with large berries. They do tend to have lower soluble solids than the Canadian cultivars, which we'll discuss here in a moment. They ripen after, or York ripens after Adams one, uh, we would consider it to be a late mid-season cultivar in Missouri. The plant is large and productive. At the Kentville, Nova Scotia research station, there was a serious effort to develop improved elderberry cultivars in the uh, in the 1950s and, and early 1960s. And a series of cultivars that were developed that were adapted to a maritime Canada. And these included Johns, Kent, Nova Scotia, and Victoria. As a group, these tend to have large fruit that ripens uh, reasonably early. They're also sweet. Um, in our trials, looking at these cultivars, they have not performed as well under Midwestern conditions as the, uh, the uh, group from uh, New York or the more recently developed cultivars in our program but there is still some interest in growing these as perhaps even as a dessert fruit. Now let's turn our attention to recent developments in uh, improved elderberry cultivars. And much of this work took place in Missouri, in the Missouri Elderberry Development Program. Uh, cultivar development has been an important part of that program since the late 1990s. And um, the uh, program has uh, several collaborating institutions, University of Missouri, Missouri State University, and Lincoln University, several research sites in Missouri. And we also work with collaborators across these three institutions and uh, nationally and even internationally to, to help develop elderberry as a commercially viable crop for the Midwest. The first cultivar I'll talk about is Ranch. Ranch was released in 2010. It was collected from the wild by Margaret Milligan, provided to the project. Um, the uh, uh, high point of ranch is that it's early ripening. Ranch plants are medium in height, one to 2.2 meters. The growth habit is upright. They have a bud break and bloom time that is consistent with other American elderberry cultivars. Uh, we would consider this to be an early ripening cultivar. And in fact, that's the, the primary area of interest related to ranch. Uh, initially in our research trials, we were not particularly excited about ranch because it was inconsistent in its performance. But this was a case where farmers said, well, we need an early ripening elderberry. And in fact, ranch performed well in several farmer sites uh, across Missouri. And because of this, it was then released. Um, it has shown moderate incidence of verified mite damage in several trials. And again, there, there is that um, caveat that we have seen inconsistent performance with ranch in, in some sites. Ranch umbels are medium in size. Uh, they ripen uniformly. They're resistant to shattering and they are present in an upright to decumbent position when ripe. The fruit is medium in size, 64.5 milligrams. The skin is dark, quality is high, total soluble solids of 11.8 degrees bricks and a pH of 4.81. A very important cultivar developed in the Missouri program is Bob Gordon. It was identified on a farm near Osceola, Missouri and provided to the program by Robert Gordon. Notable points of Bob Gordon is that it's a very consistent performing elderberry across uh, the Midwest. And it's a mid-season ripening cultivar. It fills a niche in the uh, uh, mid-season. Bob Gordon is a medium shrub to 217 centimeters with a spreading to upright growth habit. Uh, spring bud break is a bit later than a typical elderberry. It flowers again as, as uh, most elderberries do in Missouri in late May to mid-June. 
The florets are easily removed from the uh, umbel for use as a dried product or as a flavoring. And we've not investigated the pollination requirements for Bob Gordon, but we do typically recommend that uh, elderberry plantings contain more than one cultivar to provide for the uh, possibility of uh, cross-pollination. The harvest season for Bob Gordon is similar to Adams too. Again, definitely mid-season. Uh, we harvest Bob Gordon in Missouri in mid to late July. Primary shoots, those uh, uh, shoots of plants pruned back to the ground, ripen fruit over a three week period, and they allow for the harvest of the majority of the fruit in three harvests at a seven day interval. Uh, unpruned plants will have a, a more diffuse ripening period over about four weeks. Bob Gordon fruit umbels present in a decumbent position, and the umbels at harvest are large compared to Adams two and somewhat loose. Average size is uh, on unpruned or on pruned plants is about 126.6 grams. Again, we would consider that to be a large size umbel. And the yield in several of our studies has been in the neighborhood of 5,500 pounds of uh, fruit per acre. Here's a shot showing Bob Gordon. A Bob Gordon umbel. The berries are dark purple. They ripen uniformly in the umbel and they're resistant to shattering. Uh, berry size is, we would consider to be medium to large, uh, 91.6 uh, milligrams would be uh, about what we would expect Bob Gordon berries to be. And here's a shot of Bob Gordon uh, harvested in, in a lug. Uh, laboratory testing of Bob Gordon fruit over uh, several sites over several years uh, showed us a mean pH of the juice of 4.73 total soluble solids of 11.62 degrees bricks, and titratable acidity of 0.65 grams per 100 mLs of juice. Bob Gordon has been rated as slightly to moderately susceptible to leaf spot diseases, and we would consider uh, susceptibility to areified mites to be a slight problem at uh, several of our research sites. And in fact, uh, in one study at significantly less disease and mite damage than Adams II, and uh, in another study, it was comparable to Adams too. Moving uh, further into the harvest season with elderberry, Wildwood elderberry was uh, released in 2010. It was collected from the wild in uh, Oklahoma by Jack Milliken. Uh, notable points of Wildwood, it's productive, large umbels, and a late mid-season ripening time. Wildwood is a tall plant. Uh, it can reach 225 centimeters with a spreading to upright growth habit. Uh, it flowers again in June. The florets are easily removed from the umbel for use as a dried product or as a fresh product for flavoring. And again, as is the case with Bob Gordon, we don't know uh, entirely what the pollination needs are, but we would recommend planting wildwood in a planting with, with other cultivars to provide for cross-pollination. Uh, a shot showing a typical flower size for a pruned uh, wildwood plant. Harvest season is generally 14 to 26 days later than Adams II and Bob Gordon, so definitely late mid-season. Uh, primary shoots ripen over a three-week period, and we typically would expect three harvests at seven-day intervals. If the plants are unpruned, again, expect a four-week harvest period. The fruit umbels present in an upright position at uh, ripening. Uh, the umbels are medium to large, uh, somewhat loose uh, on plants pruned to the ground, a typical umbel would be in the neighborhood of 83 uh, grams or so. Uh, yield is gonna be in the neighborhood of 5,000 pounds per acre, at least that's the, been the case in our, our research trials. And wildwood is somewhat of interest because it forms secondary umbels at the axles below the main umbel, uh, the leaf axles below the main umbel. And this can lead to uh, uh, increased bearing potential for each shoot. And in fact, uh, we've looked at uh, wildwood as a possible candidate for a partial flower harvest and then leaving the uh, large flower cluster in the center to, to develop as a fruit harvest and harvesting the uh, side umbels for a flower harvest. Now here's a picture of uh, wildwood as the fruit ripens. A wildwood fruit cluster. Wildwood berries are dark purple. They ripen uniformly in the umbel and they're resistant to shattering. Uh, berry weight ranges from 52 to 111 milligrams. Uh, we have noted some yield variability with wildwood uh, among our research sites. So again, uh, it's important uh, It's important with all elderberry cultivars, but particularly with wildwood that uh, farmers evaluate its performance under their growing conditions. 
The juice characteristics uh, over a number of studies, I mean juice pH is 4.7, juice total soluble solids 9.8 degrees bricks, and a titratable acidity of 0.73 grams per 100 ml of juice. Wildwood is rated as slightly to moderately susceptible to leaf spot diseases, and we have noted some damage, although we would consider it slight, at our research sites related to area five mites. One of the more uh, recently developed cultivars in the uh, Missouri program is Pocahontas. Uh, it was identified and collected from the wild by Rocky Starnes uh, near Diamond City, Arkansas, and was released in 2019. Notable points, it's productive, it has large umbels, and it's late ripening. In fact, it's among the latest ripening of the uh, elderberry cultivars in our, our program. The plants are very large and vigorous, 1.3 to 1.8 meters in height, uh, strong upright growth habit, uh, typical bloom time. The fruit is a late ripening cultivar, ripens 10 days after Bob Gordon, and, and very high yields, again, in the neighborhood of 5,000 plus pounds per acre. And at least in our, our uh, trials to date, has been a very consistent producer. The umbels are large, 102 to 118 grams. Uh, they ripen uniformly. Berries are medium in size, about 70 milligrams, dark purple in color and, and high quality. The uh, juice, uh, total soluble solids of 11.12 degrees bricks, pH of 4.89, and titrable acidity of 0.395 grams per 100 mLs of, of juice sample. There's some interest in European elderberry production in the Midwest. Um, in our trials, we've looked at a number of elderberry, European elderberry cultivars, and these include Hashberg and the uh, suite of Danish cultivars, none of which perform particularly well. But in the course of our, our work with elderberry, we have developed what we consider to be a European elderberry cultivar, and that's the cultivar Marge, which I will quickly describe. Marge was selected near, near Eufaula, Oklahoma by Marge Milliken, and it's considered to be an open pollinated seedling of Hashberg. The plant was found underneath a Hashberg plant. Uh, we would consider it to be European elderberry based upon its uh, uh, growth habits and performance in, in the field. It has an upright to spreading growth habit. The plant is tall to three meters. In fact, it's one of the tallest plants in, in our, our uh, projects. Vigorous growth habit, and it appears to be hardy and adapted to Midwestern growing conditions. It produces flowers and fruit on one-year-old and older shoots. It does not produce flowers and fruit on new shoots from the crown. So this plant cannot be managed by cutting back annually as is the case with American elderberry. The plant is productive. The uh, ripe fruit umbels present in a decumbent position at harvest. Uh, characteristics of the uh, uh, additional characteristics of Marge, the flower and fruit umbels are abundant, but they're small. Certainly relative to American elderberry umbel size, uh, Marge would have small umbels. But the berries are large. Consistently, the individual berries are larger than the American elderberries in, in our trials. And again, just uh, some shot showing the plant of, uh, of Marge and then a close-up of the uh, fruit cluster at, at harvest. So if we were to compare Marge to American elderberries in our trials, significantly later in bud break and earlier in full bloom, less damaged by mites. In fact, very seldom do we see any evidence of mite damage on, on Marge. Larger berry weight, lower juice pH, higher total yield and number of cymes, and uh, what we would consider to be desirable biochemical properties in the fruit. And among all of the European elderberry cultivars that we've evaluated, Marge appears to be the most suited for Midwestern production. Now, just some brief comments on the future. Our work with elderberry continues. Uh, the uh, uh, cultivars developed in our program were primarily developed from wild selections, and we're always on the lookout for, for a superior wild or native plants. And in fact, we have a network of elderberry enthusiasts who regularly send us plants for evaluation. We would like to move into uh, uh, controlled breeding efforts with elderberry. This, of course, requires uh, funding and, and dedicated personnel, but uh, we're always seeking, seeking both of those to uh, continue the improvement of elderberry and the development of improved elderberry cultivars. If there are any questions related to our work with elderberry in Missouri, please feel free to reach out to, to either Patrick Byers, your speaker today, or to my colleague, Andrew Thomas, at the University of Missouri Southwest Research Center for, for more information. And with that, uh, we'll conclude the presentation. Appreciate the invitation to be with you to share information on improved elderberry cultivars. Thank you.